Some say, if there's a grill that can change my mind about pellet grills, this is it. Let's find out. So I'm stating my reviewer's bias up front so you know exactly where I'm coming from and the type of hurdles that I think need to be cleared for me to go from meh to thumbs up on a pellet grill like the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro. And so there's a few things in no particular order that have me less than excited about cooking on a grill. The first is just the overall experience. I don't like messing with Wi-Fi and power cables. If a storm comes in and you lose power, all these are things that you just don't have an issue on a pure analog. And so for me, you know, given the choice, I would take a manual transmission over an automatic transmission, but I recognize I'm a bit of a dinosaur. Outside of the experience though, there is a couple of other tangible things that I do think matter. So first has been historically their lack of ability to sear. If I show you sort of a sear clip here from my old Traeger Pro 575, you can see even cranked to the max, it just can't get hot enough in order to sear a steak. So Camp Chef's answer to that is in our sidekick here where I can get a screaming hot cast iron surface. So we'll see how we do on sear. The second is despite burning wood fuel and pellets, other pellet grills, again, going back to my Traeger or even the Pellet Joe, just didn't have enough flavor, especially when you're cooking at higher temperatures, compressed wood pellets do not offer the same flavor as what you get from something like I'm used to cooking on, like my offset smokers, for example, or even Kamado Joe. I did my Traeger versus a Kamado Joe head to head, and the Traeger just couldn't compete with flavor that I could get from charcoal and wood chunks. And so Camp Chef again says that they have an answer here with our smoke loading drawer where we can drop in real wood chunks and flavor, which should address my flavor concern. So that's really it outside of the experience, the lack of sear and the lack of flavor. I've not been gung ho about a pellet grill, but Camp Chef believes they can change my mind. So they sent me their brand new Woodwind Pro 24 inch to see if it's up to the task. And I have the perfect cooked in mind because if we can't do a steak, there's almost no point moving on to any other cooks. I picked up an amazing looking tomahawk ribeye that we are going to reverse sear on the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro 24. In terms of the setup experience, let me give you a, a crash course, one minute overview of how that went. Overall, Camp Chef has done a really good job in their packaging. My favorite grill to assemble as a Kamado Joe is it just comes fully assembled in the box, but this has to be one of my next best assembly experiences. You cut open the box, the box folds down on the side, giving space for us to set the grill up on the back. Everything is cleanly labeled or really easy to follow along as the numbers on the bags match what's in your assembly manual. And the whole process uh, went really, really well. There's also good quality components in terms of our sockets and receiving things. I didn't have anything strip or give me any difficulty whatsoever to put it together. So I'm gonna give that uh, from an overall assembler point of view of all the things that I've done compared to recently last year in my Oklahoma Joe's Highland or something like my Masterbuilt Gravity Series. This is a step above of the average assembly experience and it took me only about an hour to uh, put the grill together on my own. I'm sure if you had a spare set of hands you could get through that even quicker. Now that you uh, know a little bit more about the grill and how it comes together let's get ready to fire it up and get our steak ready to go on. So last night I already dry brined our tomahawk ribeye with some diamond crystal kosher salt and left that in the refrigerator overnight. If you've not tried this, this is really just gonna help make sure that beef is the hero of our cook as it unlocks and accentuates the natural beef flavor as well as helps give an amazing Maillard reaction by drying out our fat. Add some more pellets to our hopper. Okay, let's add our smoking wood. Turn it to smoke. Set our temp to 275. Let's go season our steak. Okay, while our grill's heating up, let's get our steak ready. So you can see from the overnight dry brine, we now have exactly as you expect, a nice dry surface. And so that salt starts to pull out moisture and then uh, it later gets sort of through osmosis pulled back into the steak. So that's really gonna help enhance the flavor of the steak all the way through. It's also gonna make it much easier to get a great crust on that. So speaking of the crust, I'm gonna go for my multiple layered steak crust. So we start with our salt brine. Then we're gonna try and get a little bit of umami. I like to use something like some truff hot sauce, which has just a little bit of extra smoky depth flavor. 
but normal any other hot sauces will work i just like the the mushroom profile that the truffle enhances and adds to our steak so a couple drops and smear that all around take it fast forward while i get the other side so now we're going to start to go for a little bit of savory so i've got some onion powder as well as garlic take it fast forward while we just sprinkle on a light layer of each on both sides of our steak again we don't want to cake that on there you just want a light sprinkle of each next i'm going to use my uh, pepper can and grind up some pepper and i'm just going to thin out my uh, setting a little bit so that i get smaller chunks it's less prone to burning that way so we'll just grind up a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper and this is going to add our spice spice is one of the best things that can stand up to smoke we're not going to be smoking this too long or too aggressively uh, but some flavors like rosemary thyme or something floral like that just doesn't stand up to smoke as well as it does after a couple hours uh, versus something like pepper so pepper is going to give us a bit of that spice element you could use some cayenne here if your family was so inclined but on steak i don't like to overdo that so now we've got a little bit of pepper just sprinkle some on each side and last but not least just a little bit of lowry's for a little extra kick of salt now, that salt that we've added on the dry brine has worked its way all the way through but i like a little bit of surface salt that immediately melts away and dissipates in our crust so we'll just add a sprinkle of lowry's add a meter probe and we are ready to get this on the grill once it's up to temperature now you're probably wondering why i'm using the meter probe when camp chef provides four different meat thermometer probes all nicely color coded so we can keep track of which one is which inside of our food but whenever i'm using a new grill i've got hundreds if not maybe a thousand cooks on the meter i just like to validate the information that i'm getting so i can understand more about not just the internal temperature of the meat which these probes will give us but the ambient temperature right where we put our steaks that's why i've gone with it today even though you absolutely don't need it since we have four probes now i'm going to be going in manual mode i tried for about an hour fussing with the app to get it to connect i know my wi-fi i've got a mesh network i've got uh, the radio band set so there's less frequency interference and nonetheless i still get stuck at the same setup screen trying to go for the app so we're going to go 100 percent analog just using our touch controller but let's grab a probe here and we'll slide it into our cook chamber through our probe port Take it fast forward while I get this ready. We're also, uh, since we've come up to temperature, now we can close the vent on our smoke drawer uh, after we've had that open for the combustion sequence. Into probe number one, open that up, slide our probe through, drop in our steak, and I'm gonna again also track with the Camp Chef probe. So I think our steak will take about an hour to cook. So while that's uh, in our grill coming up to temperature, let's make up a quick chimichurri. So I've got some cilantro, parsley. So I'm gonna go about half and half. I've got a couple shallots, heads of garlic, some hot peppers. This will add some color if you want, a little bit of red, and you can adjust to your family's likeness. These will have some kick, some sea salt, some fresh cracked pepper that I'll grind up in my pepper cannon and then a little bit of red wine vinegar as well as olive oil. I'll take you fast forward while I start to prepare this and I'll put the recipe down in the description below if you're looking to follow along with quantities. I'm just going to use uh, my ulu knife from uh, Dal Strong because it makes it really easy for stuff like rocking to not end up crushing our produce so that we can um, retain as much flavor from the uh, ingredient itself versus all those oils leaking out onto the table. I've used this before and for things like chimichurri it's my absolute favorite but if you don't have one just make sure you're using a rocking pattern versus more of a chop or a slice where you can uh, accidentally cause some of those oils to leach out. Nice coarse chop looks good some salt while we're working on our other veggies just to help start to pull some of that moisture out break that down okay let's get to work on our shallots okay looks good garlic looks good hot peppers looks good some pepper another pinch of salt red wine vinegar and some extra virgin olive oil and let's let that meld in the refrigerator for about an hour. OK, 
Okay, our steaks hit 114 degrees. So let's get this off, let it rest. We'll get ready for our sear. For our sear, I'm actually curious if I can get enough surface temperature on my cast iron pan. So I'm actually just gonna slide that in there, crank the heat and then take a surface temperature with my IR gun. And if it's not hot enough, we'll move over to our sidekick. It's just our sidekick's not gonna have any additional wood flavor for our sear. So I wanna see if we can get this hot enough. Let's crank it up. Okay, it's been about half an hour. Let's take a look. That's, that's not gonna be hot enough. We're only about 316. So we're gonna need our sidekick. Let's turn that on. And actually we can power down our main grill. So a quick little last minute change since I can't go with searing inside of our grill, I'm gonna make a quick little sear sauce. So I'll put the recipe down below, but in short, we just need a little bit of mayo, some red wine vinegar to cut that, some smoked sea salt. This is Malden's. You don't need to use smoked, but I find it adds a nice hit of flavor. Set my pepper cannon back a little bit coarser. Get some thicker pepper granules in there and some garlic powder. Mix that up and our sear sauce is complete. Now in terms of why do a sear sauce, the mayo is a little bit of extra fat. So we're hitting a really hot cast iron surface. This is gonna help it not only stick, but it's going to lock in another layer of flavor. So we're gonna have our salt dry brine, our umami hit from that trough binder, the layer of rubs that we've added, then we have the smoke, and this is gonna be the finishing touch. So our, I think it's our fifth layer here of a crust. It's gonna give some fat as well as a couple of those extra uh, flavors like garlic, the spice of the salt and pepper right on the tip of your tongue. It's gonna be great. Let's go check our temperature, see if we're ready for our sear. Let's get an IR reading of our surface temperature. 600, that is about perfect for cast iron. Let's add our sear sauce. We don't need too thick, but just a nice coating that will help this not to stick and build an amazing Maillard reaction crust that your tongue and guests will appreciate. I'm only gonna do just this side for now. I'll do the other side once we drop it onto the heat. Let's go do that. Okay, here we go. Add our sear sauce to the other side. Give that a flip. Looks good, let's go slice into it. Well, it certainly looks good. Let's slice into it, see how it tastes. Remove our butcher twine here. Nice edge to edge, medium rare. That will bloom out as the air hits it. Let's get a slice. Get a piece I'll try here with just a little bit of finishing salt added. And then another with some of our coarse chopped authentic chimichurri. This is, this is, I already know I love this stuff. So this is gonna be awesome. Let's add a little bit here to a piece or two. Dig in. Let's start with just our finishing salt piece. Get a baseline for flavor. So I love a good tomahawk and this is no exception. And so let me just try and unpack what exactly happens when you put this into your mouth. We're talking about building the layers of flavors. So the first thing, beef is the star. We added a couple extra things mildly, but not to distract from this being a, an amazing cut of steak. And that is really the, the hero here where that salt dry brine has really just helped up the natural beef flavor. Then that umami binder using that trough hot sauce. I cannot taste trough hot sauce at all, but similar to the smoke, there's a little bit of a depth just tingles through your tongue and it's like kind of this earthy, vibrant flavor. It's absolutely amazing. And then sort of in rapid succession, we get a couple of our other ingredients in terms of that finishing salt and pepper. There's a little bit of spice that brightens up the tongue and almost a cooling down savory effect from that garlic uh, and onion powder and a bit of that sear sauce that we added. And then last but not least, we're greeted with a textural sort of variety between the steak being really soft, warm, juicy, tender, and then a sort of a, a melt in your mouth crystallization crust where it's a bit of a crust at first, but it dissolves uh, once you start chewing it and it just unleashes sort of another little hit of salt and flavor. 
It's fantastic if you haven't tried it. This is my absolute favorite way of doing a crust. Let's try your chimichurri. Cheers. They say know thyself. That's why I did too. I knew this would happen. Love chimichurri. Mm. Well, we've passed our first test with flying colors. For me personally, steak is one of my favorite things to grill. And if my grill can't sear a steak and prepare one, it almost doesn't deserve to be in the backyard. So no doubt that the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro can reverse sear and turn out an amazing steak. In terms of the overall experience, we did run into one of my original hesitations where I just, despite trying and trying to get that Wi-Fi to connect, could not get the app experience. So I'm thankful that I had my meters. That's the only way I could remotely get an alert on my phone, but I'm sure with a little bit more uh, troubleshooting, I'll be able to figure out whatever the hesitation is with that software uh, getting stuck in the grill wanting to reboot and just not coming back on even after an hour of leaving it on two occasions. So now that we know it can turn out a steak, I think it's ready to graduate to the next step and get into a bit of a head to head, which is can it smoke? So make sure you've got the, uh, you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on when you're alerted that video comes out and I'm gonna put it head to head against one of my other grills to see if it turns out just as compelling of a result as a smoker as it does a grill. That's it for today though. I hope you really enjoyed this unboxing and first impressions video of the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro. Make sure you check out the members only section if you have any questions. We go live once a month. We can interact a little bit more real time than these pre-recorded videos. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off and remember don't be afraid to fire it up.